The Biden administration says its priorities include preventing the kind of regional escalation that Nasrallah warned about and evacuating American citizens from Gaza. More than 380 Palestinian dual nationals and wounded were allowed to leave Gaza today. That's according to Hamas. It's unclear how many of those were Americans, but the U.S. State Department says about 75 of the 400 Americans who want to leave have made it out. Nick Schifrin speaks with one of those American families who were stuck in Gaza. Americans who woke up in Gaza on October the 7th found themselves in the middle of a combat zone. The Hamas terrorist attack that morning included thousands of rockets fired from Gaza into Israel. And now Israel has waged war from the air, sea and land inside Gaza for three weeks. One of the American families who managed to get out is Emily Rauschenberger and her daughter, Noura Abu Hamid, who join us now from Cairo. Thank you very much. Welcome both of you to the News Hour. Emily, you were visiting your husband's family in Gaza. Tell us, what does it feel to be out? It's a huge relief. I mean, it was uh, just such a struggle that we're, we're so happy to be on the list and then through the gates. And it's really a surreal experience just, just being out because we just didn't know when this day would come. Nora, how do you feel? Absolutely thrilled, really. It's great relief, like hot shower, shower great, great food. But it's just an awful feeling knowing that we just left so many people behind. We left uh, 20 other members of our family in another apartment. It, these were the people that, that helped us survive. That you know, we, we split up the daily chores of getting bread and getting uh, water and finding some place to charge our devices. And you know, we really worked as a team. It's such an awful feeling to leave them behind and not be able to help them and not know when and if we'll see them again. Did you have second thoughts about leaving? No, not second thoughts, really, because uh, you never know if that opportunity will come back. You've mostly been in southern Gaza in what Israel identifies as a safe zone. Uh, but, Nora, let me show this photo of your room. Uh, this is damage from an Israeli airstrike that was nearby. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, yeah, for, this is our, our family home in, uh, in Abbasan, in, in the southeast of, of uh, the Gaza Strip. And if we had been there, my 14-year-old daughter and my 4-year-old would have been sleeping in those beds. There was no safe area. The south is not safe. I have uh, such a horrible experience in where we stayed in the apartments because apartments were bombed right around us. It was just luck of the draw that it wasn't your building. The bomb that did uh, break my window, it broke. Not just mine, but all the houses on my on on the street of the of our house, all the windows gone, shattered. It's a relief to just know that I'm safe right now. Like there's no chance of anything hit, like hitting me or my family. But then I think about the millions of people who, who every single hour, every single minute, every single night, just hoping and praying that that them and their family will be safe. It's I know exactly how they feel right now. It's, it's just, it's just like devastating. And do you think the State Department did everything it could to get you and your family out? I hope so. I believe so. But I, it is frustrating that it was, it took so long because we really felt in danger the whole time. And that, you know, for a country that we're that the Americans so close with, I would just hope that you know, American lives of on both sides of the border would have been equally able to leave uh, as sooner than later. It was just hard to understand why the border couldn't be opened. It was literally just had to get there and be processed across. There was n no checkpoints or any anybody stopping us from within. Do you accept the explanation from American officials that it is a lot more difficult to negotiate with Hamas, Egypt, and Qatar uh, as an intermediary than it is to evacuate from Israel? Again, I, I don't have any really insight into the issue other than, you know, again, what I saw, which is no resistance, nothing stopping us within the, the strip. But again, we, we, we've cut off from all, all communication, really hunkered down in an apartment. So, uh, so I, I wouldn't have any good really insight into that. Emily, Nora is your oldest child. You have four younger ones. What do you tell the younger ones about the violence? My four-year-old was blissfully unaware, except bombs entered her vocabulary. But my boys, um, you know, they grew, grew anxious and frustrated and one was always fighting with other kids. And so, you know, you could see the stress in other ways, even though they didn't really verbally, um, you know, uh, go on about their fears and their anxieties, but it, it definitely had a toll. I try to explain that, 
you know, this is part of a, you know, a larger regional conflict and it's complicated, but, you know, we do, we do believe one day there'll be a solution and, and people in Gaza will be easier to visit and we'll have, you know, the human rights that all humans deserve. Emily Rauschenberger, Nora Abuhamid, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time.